Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today we have got a pretty heavy training day. I've got some updates for you in a little while, but I want to get straight into my training today because we've got a lot to do. I'm really stepping it up a bit. So I'm kind of doing my pre-preseason program again, very similar to the one I did last year that I documented for you guys. So a lot of you do ask what my training schedule looks like throughout the week. So if you do want to see that 28 day program, I literally document every single day what I train and everything like that for an entire four weeks. So I'll put the link on the screen to that playlist, you guys can check it out. But I do have some pretty exciting updates that I'm going to share with you sort of midway through the day. So I'm going to start with my core workout that you guys already saw in my last day in the life video, so I'm not going to show you that. But if you do want to check that out, check out the previous episode. And then I'm going to go to the gym. My brother's got a little gym in his garage. So I'm going to take advantage of that and use it. Just a little workout there. And then I'm going to do a speed and agility workout. And then that's when I'll probably come back and rest for a bit and get some food just to refuel. And then I'm going to do a fitness session later on. So it's a pretty intense day. So just to kind of explain to you guys, some of you ask, how you should be training during season and during off season. So obviously I'm in the off season right now, about to go into pre-season, but I like to get my body in that same kind of rhythm that I would be training during season. So during the season, especially here in Europe, most matches are on a Saturday. So you want your heavy training to be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Sunday's more of a recovery day, but Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is when you're gonna do those more strenuous activities, things like gym workouts, speed workouts, speed training, agility, and things like that. Stuff that's very strenuous on the muscles because you get something called DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. So that means about 48 hours or so after those kind of workouts, you feel that soreness. So I'm sure some of you guys have gone to the gym, done leg day, then it doesn't feel sore until two days after. So that's DOMS. So that's something you get from those acute strenuous activities, those really explosive exercises. So you don't want to be doing that Thursday or Friday because even if you do it Thursday, it's not like Friday's enough time to recover. If you're playing on a Saturday, your DOMS might kick in and that's just not going to be good for your performance, things like that. So I'm getting in that rhythm now. So today's Monday, so I'm going to be doing a strenuous activity today. Then Tuesday and Wednesday are also going to be very strenuous and then taper off Thursday and Friday, which is more technical based, maybe light jogging and things like that. So just making my breakfast here going to get into my core workout in a minute and then I'll probably catch up with you guys at the gym and then from the gym we'll go straight into the agility workout. So let's go. The seasons come and go like thoughts of you Like a wave returns to the sea into the blue they change but in a cycle that I can lose Each painful but delightful to live through
All right, so training session done. Just gonna be refueling now, re-energizing, getting some good stuff in my body. So we've got some rice, we've got some falafel, we've got broccoli, sweet potatoes, we've got hazelnuts, we've got a salad here with tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce. So lots of good things. That's gonna be really good fuel for my body. Also hydrating with some water as well. So I'm gonna give you a couple of updates now. Firstly, about the Maestro training program. A lot of you guys have been asking about that. I'm hoping it's going to be launched next week, first week of July. We're just finishing the editing. Also got to write the ebook as well. So if you do get the Maestro program, you're going to get the full seven days in video format and you're also going to get the full seven days in an ebook format as well. So a lot of you asking about the price. Haven't quite decided on that yet. Going to calculate how many hours I've put into making this and everything like that. But I'm going to make the first day free for everyone. So everybody can benefit from it. Then anybody else who's looking to get the full program, you're going to be able to get that from my website at www.7mlctraining.com. So stay tuned for that. I'm really hoping it's going to be launched next week. Updates on my team situation. So since the last video, I actually did get a phone call from a team and they've invited me into preseason. So I'm really looking forward to the opportunity. Obviously preseason, I'm going to get a lot of opportunity to show what I can do instead of just being a one, two day trial or something like that. So I'm going to get to train with the players, compete with the players so the coach can really see what I'm all about. So I'm excited for that. Thankfully, I've already been preparing. It's always good to go into preseason fit. I think a lot of people are under the misconception that preseason is when you get fit. That's not when you get fit. You should be getting fit before preseason. You should be coming in to tackle preseason full at 100%. Hello. How are you today? Good. So Becca's been out for a little walk as well today. It is beautiful. We're under a bit of a heat wave for this entire week and it's going to be lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Becca loves the sunshine. Yeah. She yeah. said she wanted to move somewhere warm so I brought her to England, of course. But yeah, just going to finish this food here, refuel, rest for a bit, maybe watch some of the World Cup games and then we've got a bit of a fitness session later on so should be good. Alright, so just here at the pitch, I'm just going to set up my player tech, I'm going to track the data. So basically what you have to do is, to turn it on, you just hit this button, and the green lights come on, I don't know if you can see it because it's quite bright out, and you pop it in the back of the player tech, it's got this little like pouch, just pop it in there, like so, and you just got to give it a minute, and it tracks where you are. Basically how it works is, some of you guys ask, it's like a GPS tracking system. So it can get your distances so it can really map out this pitch. I'll show you guys after. You can literally see this pitch where I am right now. So you can literally see the outlines of the field, track the distance that you've ran, speed and everything like that. So I'm gonna explain this fitness drill to you guys. You guys can give this one a go. It's a pretty good one. Literally just fitness, nothing else. So what we do is, it's gonna be seven laps in total of the pitch but you gotta make sure you're doing it right. So what we do is, we do one lap of the pitch, it's just a light jog, literally like a 50% run, like a five out of 10, so if we imagine 10 is your fastest pace, your full out sprint, one is literally just like a slow walk. We just want a lap about a five out of 10, so just a casual jog around. This can be a warm up lap. I've already cycled here as well, so I'm nice and warm. And then what we do is, for the second lap, between our starting point and the halfway line, we bump it up to a 70%. So a little bit quicker, it's not that fast, it's just a good, strong run, nowhere near a sprint, okay? So we do that to the halfway line, and then we go back down to a 50% for the rest of the lap. Then the third lap, we go all the way from this corner right to the far side corner at 70%, and then 50% the whole way around, and we keep that pattern going. So we add a little bit more every single time. So then the fourth lap, we would do all the way down and across to the other corner, then 50%. And then the fifth lap, we go all the way down, all the way across, up to the halfway line at 70%, then back down to 50%. Then we go all the way around to the other corner, and then 50% to here. And then we do a full lap to finish at 70%. So it's not that fast, but over time, you're really building up that endurance. So you're keeping your heart rate going the entire time. So it is pretty difficult. It's a good fitness run. I'm not sure exactly how long it takes to complete the whole circuit. We'll find out when we get the player tech data. So maybe we're looking at somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes 
for the run so it's a really good endurance one it's very football specific as well because in football you're never running at one speed you're changing speeds all the time so we're not doing any sprinting at all we already covered that in the speed and agility session today so this is just full endurance so it's stamina training so what we're going to do is just set up the camera over here so you guys can see then we're going to get into it and never know how much these cameras can cover i don't think you're going to get the whole pitch but hopefully you can see the changes in pace and things like that when I get back to the start. So first lap is just the 50% jog around, use that as a warm up, and then we'll follow the pattern that I just described. So let's go. So to stop the player tech, all you do is just hold the button until we see it flashing. That's a tough one. So I got that drill from Norwich, their preseason football program. So this is something that pro players are doing even at the top level. Definitely recommend giving that one a go if you can. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cool off, get a light stretch because I'm going to do a thorough stretch at home. So I need to go home, refuel. I did bring some water with me, so I'm going to be hydrating for a little bit. Probably drink near enough this entire content, so it's a litre in here. It's a hot day. It's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so definitely need to be hydrating, sweating a lot, losing a lot of fluids. We worked very hard today. We're going to go back, get some good food, so I'll see you guys at home. All right, guys, so just got back. Now I'm going to check the player tech data. So you go into this player tech app here and once you're inside the app you go to sync, turn on the pod here like that so the green lights will be on. So here we go we can see the actual pitch that I was using. The blue line is me so obviously it was just laps around the pitch as you guys saw from the fitness session. So the stats show the distance was about 1.4 miles for seven laps around the pitch. Top speed was 13.9 miles per hour, and my top speed is somewhere between 20 and 21 miles per hour, according to the app. So as you can see, it isn't anywhere near sprinting pace, it's just a continuous run. So you want to go at a decent pace for a consistent amount of time. So it was 13 minutes. So that was including me setting up at the beginning, so I was pretty much spot on. I said it'd probably be about 10 to 15 minutes for the entire run. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm really front loading my training this week. And that's the schedule I want to get into because that's what it will be like during the season. So intense training today, which is Monday. Same again tomorrow. Then Wednesday will be intense as well. Then slightly taking my foot off the pedal on Thursday. Then Friday will pretty much be mainly technical. So I'm really going to be giving my muscles a break at that point because Saturday I'm going into preseason. I'm not going to talk too much about the team that I'm going in with, but I'm going into training with them, probably going to play a couple of preseason friendlies. And then if the coach offers me a contract that's suitable, that we're both happy with, obviously I'll be signing with the team. And at that point, if I do sign with them, I'll obviously announce who I'm going to be playing for and things like that. But the plan for the rest of the day, I'm just going to get a good meal now, probably a pasta with a good protein source, just to get those muscles recovered, get some good carbohydrates and start rebuilding those muscles that are always slightly damaged when you're training. So that soreness that you feel immediately after training is called acute muscle soreness. It's not like the delayed onset muscle soreness that I was talking about earlier on. The delayed is what you feel a couple of days after. The acute is what you feel immediately after and that usually goes by the end of the day. And basically your muscles are just getting slight tears in them. When you put them under intense pressure, when you're training at a high intensity, and it's not a bad thing, they tear so that they can grow back stronger and that's how your muscles actually grow in size and get more explosive and things like that. So that's just something you have to go through as an athlete. So if you're getting sore after training, Training, it just means you're pushing yourself and you're doing a good job so keep it up guys if you are training out there I know some of you are on your summer breaks but make sure you're preparing for your pre-seasons feel free to use any of the drills that I'm using in these videos I do hope you enjoyed this video I'll probably see you guys later on in the week in another episode but if you did enjoy it make sure you smash that like button hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos and I will see you guys in my next video